In this video, we're going to look at the definition of partial derivatives for multivariable functions. So first, though, we're going to start with what I've written here, uh, which hopefully you recognize as the definition of the derivative for a single variable function, the function f of x. Uh, and this one is written at a specific point at x equals c. Uh, so hopefully you recognize that. I'm going to draw a little picture of what that represents because that's going to help you understand what partial derivatives for multivariable functions represent. Um, so the basic idea is that you've got some function, whatever that function might look like, and you've got some point x equals c, and so the f of c would be the output at that point. And then you've got some other point, c plus h, so the x coordinate would be uh, somewhere away from x equals c, and then that that point also has an output. And then the expression really is a slope calculation between those two points. So you've really got change in output, f of c plus h minus f of c, divided by change in input. So the denominator is really c plus h minus c. It's just that the c is cancel, so we don't usually write them. And then the basic idea is you're going to let h approach 0. So you're going to let that second point slide in closer and closer to that first point. And so what you get with that derivative is a slope, a uh, limiting slope of when you let that second point slide in closer and closer to the first point. And then, of course, you need to consider when h is both bigger than 0 and when h is smaller than 0. This picture I drew would be when h is positive. Uh, but if h is negative, then c plus a negative h value would be left. And so we'd have another point over here we look at that slope of that line and again let that second point slide in toward that first point and provided that limit exists that gives you that slope of the tangent line at that point. Okay and then so this is the derivative definition at a specific point but in calculus one you also looked at kind of the generic definition of a derivative that you would define f prime of x to be the same limit but just with x instead of c for all values of x for which this limit exists. And so that's how you define the derivative and then that can give you the derivative at lots of points. So for example, if your function equation was x squared, say minus 2x plus 3, you could use that limit definition to think about the derivative and eventually prove some derivative rules so that you could find the generic form of that derivative. And then you could plug in specific points, say x equals 1, and figure out what the slope of the tangent line to the graph would be at lots of different points. So all those derivative rules that you learn in Calc 1 basically come back to this definition of the derivative. All right, so what we want to do then is extend that for multivariable functions. So we're going to start with a function of two variables, f of x, y, and a multivariable function actually has many kinds of derivatives. So that might be surprising to you. Uh, but the first derivatives that we're going to look at are what are called partial derivatives. So we define the partial derivative of f with respect to x to be this notation. So this looks like notation that you might have seen in calculus one, but there is a slight difference, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, this is defined in terms of a limit. So we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0. And this definition is going to look a lot like the definition we reviewed for single variable functions. I'm going to start with f of x plus h. You can do this at a specific point and then extend. And then I'm just going to leave the y alone. So I've only added that plus h to the x minus f of x, y all over h. So that looks pretty much the same. Really the only difference is that I've added the plus h to just the x part here and not both of the input variables. All right, so we'll look at some graphs in a little bit to try to understand what this represents. Uh, we can also define a partial derivative of f with respect to y. So we'll have del f del y and our definition is going to be almost the same here except we'll have the plus h on the y part. Okay, so uh, those are two of the kinds of derivatives that a multivariable function would have. Of course, if you had a function of x, y, and z, you could extend this idea and do the partial derivative with respect to z, where you would add the plus h to the z part of the function. Um, all right, I'm going to talk a little bit about notation, and then we're going to look at some graphs here. So 
Uh, by notation, we mean that we want to talk about the kinds of symbols that we use to describe derivatives. So for single variable functions, for f of x, y, you probably mostly used f prime of x or maybe f prime of c or dy dx. Uh, you might have also looked at this notation. Textbooks tend to use this a lot, d dx of f of x. So that would have all been for single variable functions. For multivariable functions, we have some similar notation, but the issue is that the prime is a bit of a problem here because the prime doesn't indicate what variable you're taking the derivative with respect to. So the notation that you're going to use for partial derivatives, you won't be using primes, you're going to use several different kinds of derivatives here. And you might notice that in my definitions here, I use this kind of curly looking D thing here in my ordinary derivative. I did not. And so that will actually be important if you go on and take differential equations. You'll pay attention to that when you have partial differential equations or ordinary differential equations. It has that different kind of symbol there. Uh, this curly D symbol is a del, a lowercase del symbol, and that indicates that you've got a partial derivative here. And so I might have del F, del X for a partial derivative with respect to X or del f del y for a partial derivative with respect to y. I like to use that notation, uh, but there are some other notations uh, kind of similar to how in Calc 1 you might have seen d dx of a function. Uh, we can do the same kind of thing here. So we'll have del del x of a function. That's operator notation. It's indicating that the del del x is operating on the function, so it's acting on the function f of x, y. There are some other notations. These are a little different than Calc 1 notations. Uh, we might write the function f with a little subscript of x to indicate a partial derivative with respect to x, or f with a little subscript of y to indicate a partial derivative with respect to y. So those are perfectly fine to use. I tend not to use them as much, but uh, you're perfectly free to use those when appropriate. Another one that is maybe not as common, but you might occasionally see is D with a subscript of X acting on the function F. So derivative with respect to X of the function F. So those would be all kinds of different notations that you might use for first derivatives. Uh, second derivatives, just like in calculus one, you can find the derivative of a derivative. So there are some different kinds of notations that you might use for second derivatives. Um, so just like in calculus one, uh, remember you can't use the prime notation here, but the d dx notation from calculus one, you might have used notation like d squared y dx squared, which would indicate the second derivative of y with respect to x. So similarly here, we can write del squared f del x squared. That would indicate that you've taken the derivative with respect to x and then taken the derivative with respect to x again. You can also use the subscript notation. You could write f x x for that. Uh, you can also then maybe find a derivative with respect to y twice. So a derivative with respect to y and then the derivative with respect to y again. So a second derivative taken with respect to y twice. Uh, the interesting thing about multivariable functions that you don't really have to deal with with single variable functions is that you can have what are called mixed partial derivatives. We'll look at this some more in some later videos, but where you might take the first derivative with respect to x and then the second derivative with respect to y. So that would be what this notation indicates that I've written here. This derivative has been taken first with respect to x and then second with respect to y. So del del x of the function f of x, y, and then del del y of that. So that would be what that would indicate. And then I can also have second partial, mixed partial derivative taken with respect to y first and then with respect to x. It looks a little bit backwards to some students, but if you think about it in terms of the operator notation, sort of like function composition, del del x of del del y of f of x, y. Uh, and then with subscript notation for those, the subscript notation actually is the other way around. 
So if I take the derivative with respect to x first, I'm going to write that subscript first, and then with respect to y next. Or if I take the mixed partial derivative with respect to y first, and then with respect to x, I will write it like that. Okay, so what I'm going to look at next is trying to understand the geometry of what these partial derivatives mean. So I'm going to scroll back up here for a second. We're going to look at this graph that I drew here for the single variable function. And the idea here is that what we're looking at is slopes of tangent lines. All right, so here is a function on calc plot 3 d You can see if you look in the window what function I've graphed z equals negative 4x over the quantity x squared plus y squared plus 1. The domain of that function is all of R2. Uh, I've reset the viewing window a little bit here so that x goes from negative 4 to 4 and y goes from negative 4 to 4. And then I use the little level curves icon to get a graph of level curves. And then I clicked on that so that I see a graph of the level curves and a graph of the function. Okay, so I typed a point here, 1, 2. I changed the x and y coordinates. So I put x at 1 and y at 2, just because that's a point that's kind of easy to look at on this particular surface. So you can see on the graph of the level curves, I've got the point 1, 2, and then you can also see on the 3D graph of the surface, I've got the point 1, 2. And then I'm going to use this little option. There's a little arrow right up by all the options where you change the window. This arrow is not available unless you've already graphed the level curves. But if you've graphed the level curves and I click on that little arrow, I see there's a bunch of choices here. And one of the things, I've just highlighted it, is show fx trace slash tangent line. That will show me a partial derivative in the x direction. So you'll see on that graph, notice that there's a curve here. That curve would be right through y equals 2. y is held constant. In this case, y is 2. That's what the red curve is, slicing through my surface at y equals 2. And then what you see there is a tangent line to that graph at my point. So if I rotate this around and look at it from the side, you can see that we've got that curve, we've got that tangent line at that point uh, where x is 1 and y is 2. All right, the other thing that you can see here, if you look up at the top of the screen, it says f sub x of 1, 2 equals negative 0 0.4444. So that's a numerical approximation for that partial derivative at that point. What that tells me is that when I'm at that point and I go in the direction of increasing x, the outputs of the function, the z values of the function, are decreasing. I've got a negative derivative in that x direction, so that tells me that those z values are decreasing. So going back to thinking about derivatives, telling you about rates of change, things are increasing or decreasing if your derivative is positive or negative. All right, if I take that same surface and I now choose show fy trace slash tangent line, we see a slice. This is a slice through the surface at x equals 1. x is being held constant and y is being allowed to change there. And we see a tangent line to that surface at our point. And we can see that if you go in the direction of increasing y, along that curve, in the direction of increasing y, the z values are getting bigger. So you can see from looking at the graph of the surface that you expect to have a positive derivative in the y direction, a positive partial derivative with respect to y. If you look up at the top of the screen, you see a numerical approximation for that partial derivative. f sub y at 1, 2 is 0 0.4444. So I've got a positive derivative in the y direction. I had a negative derivative in the x direction. What those tell me is that when I'm at that point, if I go in the y direction, in the direction of increasing y, the outputs of the function will get bigger. But if I'm at that point and I go in the direction of increasing x, the outputs of my function will get smaller. You might be able to think about lots of other kinds of derivatives that you might have uh, if you stand at that point and you go in some other direction than just the x direction or the y direction. Uh, you might have outputs of the function that are getting bigger or smaller. So we're going to look at those in a later section of this chapter. And But those are some of the other derivatives that we will look at. All right, so you should try some homework problems about partial derivatives.